So race, of course, in the United States, we usually talk about it, think about it, observe it relative to physical differences, especially skin color, maybe hair texture. If you start sort of trying to list the attributes, we actually realize pretty quickly it's kind of a slippery um, uh, category. Um, but the way that um, race came to be, um, and, and sometimes we will hear today um, scholars talk about race being a social construction. Well, what does that mean? Basically what that means is that race is a category wherein which physical attributes have been linked in the social environment with certain kinds of laws, certain kinds of access to social goods, um, which has, um, so for example, we might say, um, race is the kind of arbitrary linkage between, well, who should be a citizen of the United States? Well, in the 1940s, 1950s, our laws said only people who were quote unquote white. So then you had lots of conversations about, well, which physical attributes signal white or not? And in that legal conversation, out of which came actual rulings on who could be a citizen or not, race emerges as a category. A physical attribute gets linked with a law. Um, and deeply impacts people's day-to-day -day experience. But it's not just their bodies, it's the way bodies get treated in particular ways that makes that category of race. We know, and scientists have said now for nearly 100 years, not quite that long, that race in and of itself is not itself a biological genetic category. That's a confusing thing for um, those of us who live and see and observe race every day to wrestle with. We think we can see it, right? We see it on the body. And we also know, for example, there are genetic predispositions, tendencies, certain kind of illnesses that some racial and ethnic communities are more likely to have than others. So to say race is not genetic and is not in our DNA is not to say there's no biological or genealogical effect of our genetic structures. It is to say that what we decide counts as race is as much or more a social phenomena. So there is no DNA for black or DNA for Latino. We might, between an African American person and a white person, have more DNA similarity than you might have between two white people. But what happens in the social sphere is the sort of determinant of how a racial category gets, gets formed, and that's very, very important. All of us, even if we say race, race is not in our DNA, right? It's a social category. I want to be very clear that that does not mean, therefore, that it is not real or that it's only an illusion. It's not. It's very real. Um, this church we're in right now, it's a construction. Somebody built it. But just because it's built doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's actually here. Um, and so in the United States, and this is true globally, but if we just think about the United States, the category of race has almost always but not exclusively, been built in relationship to systems of oppression. And so we can go all the way back to the 1600s before this um, land on which we are standing talking right now was the United States. And we know that the category of white was a category that emerged as laws decided which bodies could and could not be legally enslaved, could and could not be legally targeted for genocide, legally, genocide and dispossession. And so when we say race is a product or a result of material injustices, it's those kind of processes we're talking about. So race is um, a category in which we, we know some bodies are going to be policed differently than other bodies, right? Um, there's nothing innate about the person who embodies the attributes recognized as race, but we know those bodies will be treated differently by police. That makes white and black very different categories of race because of what happens in the social environment. So usually when you hear Protestants um, invoke Martin Luther King on that front, they are lamenting that we um, worship in such racially separated, even maybe segregated spaces. And they use that statement to suggest that our separation in and of itself is the problem. And we need to get over that and learn to come, come together across our differences, worship together, play together, work together. Um, my belief is that, in fact, that using that claim in that way averts our eyes from the reality, which is we are racially separated still because of the histories and the relationships that undergird our racial differences. So instead of seeing our racially separated worship spaces as the problem and thus trying to reconcile and come together as the solution, 
I believe we need to recognize our racial separateness as a symptom of a much deeper problem that I believe we have yet to seriously contend with in the quote-unquote white church.